Pete Calandra here. And on today's video, we'll take a look at MIDI editing in Pro Tools using real-time properties. MIDI real-time properties let you change some MIDI properties of MIDI and instrument tracks or MIDI clips during playback. There are five types of MIDI real-time properties. Quantize, duration, delay, velocity, and transpose. As an aside, most people use these functions from the event operations window. MIDI real-time properties can be adjusted during playback so you can listen to the results. Once you've found the settings you want and get the feel that you'd like, you can write these settings to the selected tracks or clips. This overwrites the corresponding MIDI properties on the selected tracks or clips and resets the real-time properties to display its default settings. This is going to be a two-part series. This first part will go over using real-time properties to transform rhythm section feel, and in part two, I'll go over how to incorporate it to enhance orchestral performances. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. For more content, please subscribe, and to be notified, ring that bell. Let's get right into looking at a few ways you can incorporate real-time properties to enhance your workflow. Okay, right here we've got a drum groove. We're gonna play back and listen to this highlighted MIDI clip here. Notice I've got it soloed. All right, so that's, that's a fine groove, but it's a little stiff for me. I want something that's got a little bit more swing to it. A couple of things before we get into real-time properties. You have to decide whether you want to see where the notes are being moved to on the MIDI edit window here, or whether you want to leave them as they are and just hear the difference. And the way that you access that is you go to Setup, Preferences, and you go to the MIDI tab, and right here, Display Events as Modified by Real-Time Properties. And then if you undo the modification, it'll go back to the original state. I'm going to unsolo this and I'm going to mute the drums right there. So we won't be hearing this track. We'll be hearing these three tracks. So I separated out all of the drums into the individual instruments. So I've got kick, snare, and hats. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to play around with different feels on different instruments kind of like or different parts of the drum kit, kind of like a, what a real drummer would do. So that would mean different treatments. And also there are different note values, right? Because the hi-hats are playing eighth notes, and then these two guys are playing 16th notes as their bass time feel. So I want to see real-time properties. You can access it right here. And you can select real-time properties, and it becomes visible. Now, there's another way to see real-time properties, which we'll get into in the second video, and that's more helpful when you want to deal with things on a smaller level. Let's say you just wanted to affect these three notes. You would separate that out and use the other method, which I'll go over in the second video. But right now, this is the first way that we would work on these. So let's take a listen. I'm going to solo the, this drum track again. All right. The first thing I'd like to do is work on the kick drum. I've soloed the kick drum here and I've made my instrument track solo saved. And let's try this. Ta, 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 ta. Let's change our grid to 16th notes so we can really see what's going on here. And you see that it's right on the grid. Let's click on quantizing and we get this little sub window here. And if I click here, we've got just same type deal as with calling up the quantize. And you could quantize this right now, and that would be interesting. But I want to wait until I get everything together before I commit uh, my, my quantizing. In other words, I want to get all my feels right, which means that I would set up the drums with one, the kick drum with one kind of a feel, and then the snare, and then the hats. And then I might go back and readjust things to make it exactly what I want. And one reason why this is important, and I teach this to my students, is that not every person who's working on MIDI in any kind of a DAW is a world-class keyboard player. And as of right now, and this is the beginning of 2021, it's still a fact that the best 
or the most common way to get MIDI information into a DAW is to play some sort of MIDI keyboard with a piano style layout. There are other methods, things like push, where you can enter notes, and that all is worthy of exploration. And I think as we go forward, that more things like that will become more prevalent. But right now, MIDI keyboard. And if you're not a great keyboard player or even a competent keyboard player, you need to be able to use all the MIDI editing tools at your disposal to get the music to sound the way that you want. So let's work on this. Got our quantize is a 16th note, and I want to introduce some swing to this. So let's try 57 as our swing value. And you notice that the notes, the 16th notes jumped. The eighth notes stayed right on the grid, but any of the 16th notes moved. They're a little bit later. That's good. I think I want a little bit more swingy. So let's try 62. I like that. Let's add our snare. And I've already done a quantize here. And let's see what that sounds like. Now, the only notes you're going to hear are the blue notes. These gray notes are, uh, they've been muted, each individual note. Let's do it without the quantizing, just the kick drum. That's okay. But again, if we look at this, now we go to grid mode here. This note is a 16th note, right? It's on the fourth 16th note of beat one, and that's right on beat four. So if we go to quantize and we set 16th notes, you'll notice that only the 16th notes have moved and these notes stayed the same. So that means it's a little bit later on the beat. And that's kind of a cool feel, right? Doom, ba. This 16th note is a little bit closer to beat two, right? The back beat. And then you've got this huge space now between beat two and beat four. And it's a really cool. Now, let's try something that's a little bit less. Let's try about 58, right? Still a little stiff, right? So there's no science to this. It's, it's a, your intuition and what your aesthetics are. Nice. Now, the next thing I want to talk about here is delay, right? So what if I now want to make the entire cross stick part be a little bit behind the beat, right? So you delay it and We'll go over advance in a minute. So let's say I delay it just by 20 ticks. You'll see that they all, all moved, so that even beat four now is a little bit after the beat. Right, so we're starting to get a nice feel now. Let's leave that, and let's do our hi-hats. And we're going to work on three things here. So let's play it with the hi-hats straight. I've got no real-time properties here. Well, the first thing is I'd like the hi-hats to be a little bit louder, right? So I'm going to add velocity. I'm going to add 15 to each one of those. So now I can hear them a little bit better. Now, these are all eighth notes, right? So well, you can have your swing or your quantize be eighth notes. So what happens if I made this, let's just say a little bit swing in like 54. Now notice it only does in between the beats. On the beats, those all stay the same. That's interesting, but that's not what I want. So I'm going to undo the quantize. And I'm going to try playing around with where those eighth notes are placed on the grid. So let's try this. Let's make it advance it so they're a little bit ahead of the beat by, let's say, 20 ticks. And you see they've moved a little bit to the left. Let's play it.
That's interesting. It's a little bit edgy. Uh, I can make that even more edgy to show that off a little bit. Yeah, I don't like that at all. I think what I'd like to do is have them be delayed so that they're a little bit laid back. And again, by just maybe 10 ticks, so that there's just a tiny bit of delay on all of those notes. And now we've got a really nice feel. Now, another thing to notice is that you can always tell that there are real-time properties on your clips because if you look on the upper right-hand side of the clip, there's a little T. In the second video, when I show you how to bake them into the performance using the clip-based mode, that T becomes an R, but I'll get into that in the second part of this video. But for right now, I just realized that that T there lets you know that these are real-time properties. I'm going to delete these, and I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to unmute this, unmute all these. And we'll play the first four bars with our new feeling, right? So that's got a nice character to it, right? And that's what we came from. All right, so that's a look at altering a drum groove. In our next example, I've got piano, bass, and drums, a smooth jazz kind of a rhythm section piece, and we'll see how we can work on this to make it sound better. Again, this is kind of square. Eh, doesn't really have a, a, a good feel to it. And it's the same drum performance as before, except this time I've got the snare instead of playing a cross stick, it's actually playing a real snare, and those in between ghost notes are not muted. So let's start with our drums, and I've set this up already so that I've got a 59% swing here, which is different than before. And let's look at our snare drum. And again, I've got a real swing on this, 112% with the snare drum. And you can see it almost has a shuffle feel to it, right? Now notice that what's on beat four is smack dab on beat four. So that's kind of like your, you know, your everything that's on the beat is an anchor as to where the real time is. So like your, your downbeats on your kick drums, uh, and beat four on your snare drum. And let's add our hi-hats, and let's see. I made this 56% swing on the hi-hats. Now, this is different. Before, I just delayed the hi-hats, but because I've got such a, a shuffle-ish feel, on the snare drum, I've quantized these differently. And what I want to also do is bring my velocity up. Uh, I want to hear those hi-hats. I need to hear that. And Great. And now let's uh, unsolo those. And let me mute just the piano and the right hand and the left hand. And let's add our bass in there. Okay, so again, I've quantized this to 16th notes with a 62% swing. And I want to make the bass just have a little bit more oomph, so I'm going to add 20, tick, 20 levels of MIDI velocity. Right, so it's hitting a, a higher velocity layer. I can always bring my MIDI volume down to balance that. Yeah. Okay, great. And then add our left hand from our roads. So 
So there's two ways we can look at this. So the first thing is I could just delay everything so it's a little bit later. So turn this off and you can see how I'm a little ahead of the beat here, which really, oof, sound like I'm 17 again. <laughs> That's okay. We go with that. Let's add our swing. Now you notice that we've got. What happens if I made this a little bit swingier, like 62%? Notice that we've got. Oh, the same with the bass as the piano. Let's make this even more. See, it's feeling kind of good to me, right? And each one of these has a different amount of swing to it. All right, so let's do this. Let's add our right hand in the piano now. This is a good time to just lay things back so that they're a little bit behind the beat. So that's 50 ticks later. So uh, 120 ticks is a 32nd note, right? So I'm close to a 64th note later here, but let's have see what happens if I make this a hundred ticks later. So that's almost a 30 second note later. See that? That's fitting right in the pocket now. So now that I'm listening to this, the left hand on the piano is too loud. So I could bring down the MIDI volume, but it's also, I'm hitting it too hard. So I want to reduce the velocity there. Oh, see, look at this, minus 30 ticks. I've already set something up. That's too much. So let's do minus, whoops, excuse me, minus 20 ticks, uh, levels of MIDI velocity. That brings us to the end of this video. I'll be posting part two in a few days, maybe next week, and you can check that out. That'll be more orchestral based. You'd really help out the channel with a thumbs up, a subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified. Thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far. I've been Pete Calandra, and I'll catch you on the next one.